In this video, we're going to go ahead and solve this particular integral using the Feynman technique. Oh, that Feynman technique, my goodness, it is such an incredible and just fun technique to use whenever you're solving some integration problems. Now, I can't say that it's easy because it does take some practice, and I'm sure you've seen some videos where I posted and talked about this, and I'm a big believer in practice makes perfect. Now, I gotta say, I'm still not an expert in this technique. I don't think I'm an expert in really anything, but I do suggest that if you see the Feynman technique, once you see this particular problem, write it out on your own, and you're gonna see just how fun this is gonna be. So how does the technique actually work? I like to think of it as sort of like a U substitution where you have to find a U value on the top and then the DU, the stuff that we technically are gonna cancel out, is gonna be on the bottom. And that's typically not the case whenever we're solving any sort of problem using U substitution. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new function and you're gonna see that it's gonna sort of make sense and then I'll definitely go uh, on it step by step. So we have f of alpha is equal to the integral from zero to infinity of the natural log of alpha, and then we have e to the x minus one, and then we're gonna go ahead and put a plus one here, all over e to the x minus one with respect to x. So think about what I just did here. I created this new function f of alpha. That's my new variable alpha, and alpha is nestled right there inside the natural log, and you're gonna see why I did that in a second. And I just want to let you know that I did write two different books here, Book of Integrals and Book of Marvelous Integrals. And both of these talk about the Feynman technique. This book right here is for the most basic integrals and then with the Feynman technique nestled in there at the end. And here we have the Book of Marvelous Integrals where it's introduced very, very early on in the book. So I highly recommend getting yourself a copy of these. Okay, so now for the technique. Again, it's a little complicated, but the way I like to do it is using KNF. Know, need, and find. So we have to know something about the function, something for the initial value. I think that's gonna be very important. And then we need a specific value for the alpha that's gonna give us the original function, and that means we're gonna to have to find a specific integral. Let me go ahead and explain. So here we are back to our integral. Now, one of the reasons why I chose this particular integral right here is because one, we have the EX minus one that we were able to produce from this up here. So we have the EX minus one, there's the E to the X minus one right here. So remember the Feynman technique needs the K and F. So K, what do we know? Let's go ahead and talk about that. Well, if we were to make alpha zero, I want you to think about what's gonna happen here, and this is what the initial condition is about. If we make alpha equal to zero, we're gonna have zero, this entire thing goes away, plus one. So we just have the natural log of one, making this entire numerator zero, making our integral zero. So that's actually perfect. So now we know something, and this is great. We have a perfect initial condition. Well, what do we need? We need f of two. Why f of two? Well, we need the two up here. So if alpha is equal to two, we're gonna have two e to the x, and then we distribute the two to this, we have minus two plus one, and that's gonna give us minus one. So two e to the x minus one, and that's exactly what we're gonna get up here. So the f of two is the integral that we actually need. That tells us then, every time we do this, that we need to find a specific integral, and that's gonna be the integral from zero to two of f prime of alpha with respect to alpha. And why is that? Because according to the first fundamental theorem of calculus, this is f prime, so this will equal to f of two minus f of zero. Now remember, f of zero is zero, so really this is just gonna be f of two. So we know something, we need something, and then we need to find something. And this is gonna be the hardest part, but once we actually have just an integral in terms of alpha, all we have to do is integrate from zero to two, and hopefully we arrive at our answer, which is gonna give us a solution to this integral right here. Now I wanna give you a heads up. If you haven't taken calculus three, then the following step is gonna be a little difficult, but what I'm doing is I'm taking the partial derivative with respect to alpha. I'm sure people in the comments are gonna see that I'm basically just integrating under the integral sign, and that's Leibniz rule. I like to call it the Feynman technique because that's how he popularized it, and that's why it's called the Feynman technique in my eyes and in a lot of mathematicians' eyes. But anyway, that's actually what we're doing. Leibniz told us so we can go ahead and take the partial derivative inside the integral. Of course, that's provided that the function converges, so we're, we're good, we're good there. But when I take this partial derivative, just keep in mind that I'm gonna treat every variable like a constant. So in this case, I am not worried about the x. Anything that has an x is a constant, so I'm really worried about the alpha. 
So in this particular integral, I am taking f prime of alpha. In other words, I am taking the partial derivative with respect to alpha inside here. So f prime of alpha will become the integral from zero to infinity. Is that what I wrote? Yep, perfect. Now we're gonna take the derivative of this. Now keep in mind, e to the x minus one, that's simply just a constant because we're not worried about the x. We're taking the derivative with respect to alpha, so x is not dependent on alpha, so this is just a constant. So if you really wanna think about it, you have one over e to the x minus one, and now let's go ahead and talk about what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna take the derivative of this. Now, the derivative of the natural log is the derivative of the inside over the inside value. So the derivative of the inside here that's my alpha, this entire thing is a constant, so the answer here is gonna be e to the x minus one, and then the derivative of one is zero, over the stuff that I had on the inside, and that's alpha, e to the x minus one, and then we have plus one with respect to x. And this is why we did this, because look, the e to the x minus one and the e to the x minus one on the top and bottom are gonna cancel out. So now we have a nice integral, f prime of alpha, integral from zero to alpha of one over alpha e to the x minus one plus one with respect to x. And this is where things are gonna get interesting because even though the Feynman technique allows us to do this, it's gonna be somewhat difficult a lot of times on how to actually integrate this with respect to x. And that's actually the hardest part, in my opinion, about the Feynman technique because we have to sort of get a little clever with this. So I'm gonna start off by doing some crazy things here and multiply everything by e to the negative x. So we have everything by e to the negative x. Now, what is that gonna give us? Well, we have an integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x over, and now let's talk about this one right here. So if I multiply this alpha to, or distribute this, this is alpha e to the x minus alpha plus one. And don't forget, I'm multiplying this entire thing by e to the negative x. And I'm doing this for a reason. You're going to see in a second. When I distribute this e to the negative x to this e to the x, that's just going to become one. So what we have here is we have alpha and then plus e to the negative x. And I'm just going to switch these and make it one minus alpha, one minus alpha, and then with respect to x. And I know that right now you might think, Miguel, what did you just do? Because it seems like it's more complicated. And though it might look that way, you're gonna see that it's gonna prove to be very useful. Because now what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna introduce a one minus alpha on the top and then a one over one minus alpha on the outside. Why is that? Because this divided by this is one, you're preserving the function there. So now what we have is we have f prime of alpha is equal to, whoops, let's go ahead and put it on the outside, one over one minus alpha, integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x, one minus alpha over alpha plus e to the negative x, one minus alpha dx. And again, it might look a little confusing, but check out what's gonna happen here. We almost have the same value on the top and bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and create a u substitution. We're gonna make u equal to alpha plus e to the negative x, one minus alpha. And don't forget, now we're integrating with respect to x. So we're not worried about the alpha. That is a constant at this point. So our du will be negative e to the negative x, one minus alpha. That's nice, right? Don't forget your dx. Now, before we even do anything, let's go ahead and change our parameters because we have when x is equal to zero, then our u value is gonna become, let's see, there's no alpha here, this is just uh, u is equal to alpha plus e to the zero is simply one, but we have one minus alpha plus one minus alpha, the alphas cancel out, so this really just becomes one, okay? And now we have when x is equal to infinity. Now, I know that a lot of people are gonna be upset that I'm not putting the limit as you know uh, b approaches infinity or something like that, but I would just want you to imagine that we're in or inputting infinity to our x value. So we're plugging in infinity for the x value. What u is gonna to equal to, we have alpha plus e to the negative infinity approaches zero. So this entire portion goes away, giving us just alpha. And now we're able to have our new integral here. So we have f prime of alpha is equal to one over one minus alpha. And then we have the integral from one to alpha, and then this portion right here was our differential du, except we just had a negative on here, so I'm gonna put negative one over this entire value was our u du. Mm, that's not bad, right? I kinda like that. Okay, so now we can integrate this. This is just gonna be a natural log. I'm gonna put this negative on the outside, and I'll put f prime of alpha is equal to negative natural log of 
we have u over one minus alpha, and then we're integrating from one to alpha. I almost put infinity there. Okay, so now let's go ahead and implement the first fundamental theorem of calculus. We have negative natural log of alpha over one minus alpha, and then we have minus, and we're gonna put natural log of one, but natural log of one is zero, so that goes away. So look what we have. Our f prime is now a simple function with respect to alpha. And this is great because now we can go ahead and take the integral from zero to two of both sides. This is what I mean. We're gonna take the integral from zero to two with respect to alpha, and we're gonna do the same thing from zero to two with respect to alpha. But you're gonna see that that's actually more difficult than we actually think. Okay, so at this point, things have gone a little crazy and I'm hoping that you sort of kept up. I know the substitutions here are a little confusing. The alpha can get all over the place, but hopefully it sort of makes sense. Now, the next step is something that I sort of covered in a previous video. I'm gonna go ahead and link it down below, but I believe it's the, the last video that I actually did that covers how to solve this particular integral. But if you feel like you need another review, check this video out. Well, the good thing is that we know that this right here is simply just f of two. So on the left-hand side, we just have f of two, and that's amazing. We have to worry about this one. So let's go ahead and do some substitution. So let's go ahead and start off by first making this value, uh, we're gonna go ahead and make it uh, a W. So we're gonna do W is equal to one minus alpha, DW will equal to negative D alpha. Okay, that's not bad. But let's go ahead and change our parameters because when U is, or when alpha in this case is equal to zero, we're gonna have alpha is equal to zero, our w will become one minus zero, which is just one. And then we have when alpha is equal to two, that our w is one minus two, we have negative one. Okay, not too bad. Let's go ahead and put this out here. So we still have this negative here. We have negative natural log of alpha, and we have the integral from, we put uh, one to negative one over, and then we have w, and then let's go ahead and change things up a bit because our dw was negative d alpha. So we have negative d alpha or negative dw. So lots of different variables here. Now, this negative is gonna prove useful because we're actually gonna bring it to the outside, flip these parameters, and then that negative goes away. So this becomes from negative one to one of negative natural log of alpha d w over w. Now, we have an issue here because this is in terms of alpha, but that's okay because we know something about alpha. If we bring the alpha to the other side, subtract the w, we get that alpha is equal to one minus w, and that's exactly what we have here. So we really have natural log of one minus w, and this is where we're gonna go ahead and use a power series. So here we have a nice power series. It's basically the geometric series from zero to infinity of w to the power of n. And this will be equal to one over one minus w, provided that the absolute value of w is less than one. And in this case it is, because we're going from negative one to one, the absolute value of that is gonna be less than one. So we are good to go. So now we can go ahead and integrate both sides. This will become negative natural log of one minus w, is equal to, and this, through a simple power rule, will become w to the n plus one over n plus one. And this is perfect because negative natural log of one minus w is literally right here. So we actually have f of two equals to the integral from negative one to one of, we have this sum of w to the power of n plus one over n plus one, but then don't forget, we're still dividing by a w. So if I were to divide by a w, we can go ahead and use properties of exponents to subtract the exponents. So this w will go away, and this will become a w to the power of n. And now all we have to do is integrate with respect to w. And a lot of people in the comments mentioned, or in the previous video, why exactly we could do this. And I keep forgetting the theorem, so please let me know. I think it's like absolute convergence theorem. I hope I got that right. But that allows us to flip the series and the integral sign so that we can simply integrate with respect to w. So when that happens, we get that f of two is gonna equal to the sum from zero to infinity of, we have w to the n plus one all over n plus one squared, and then we're integrating from negative one to one. Okay, let's go ahead and plug in the one. We have f of two equals to the series from zero to infinity of one over n plus one squared minus, and then now we're gonna go ahead and plug in the negative one, and that's negative one to the n plus one over 
n plus one squared. All right, so now we're dealing with two series. And if you notice, this is basically the Basel problem. So here's the series we are trying to solve. The first series right here, if you were to rewrite some of the first couple terms, you notice that it's actually just the Basel problem, pi squared over six. Well, the second term is alternating, so we have to be a little careful with that. If we were to rewrite it, ah, it's right here, you'll notice that it starts out with negative plus, negative plus. But the negative portions are the odd values, and then the positive portions are uh, the even values. This right here actually equals to pi squared over 24, and then this, the odd values, is equal to pi squared over 8. Before we get to our solution, I just want to let you know that I do talk about this in my book of Marvelous Integrals. Continuing on, don't forget that this is actually being subtracted. That's the important thing here. Uh, I guess I got this all over the place, but anyway, this is being subtracted. So this is pi squared over 6, plus pi squared over a because that was originally negative you're subtracting it and then we have minus pi squared over 24. getting some common denominators will give us pi squared over 4. and that is exactly what our solution is we started off with some the Feynman technique making it super easy in the very beginning or at least i hope it was easy finding the partial derivative starting with our k and f and then from there we did all this work so at the end we can get an answer through the Basel series or the Basel problem of pi squared over four. <sighs> oh boy, was that fun. I hope that you found this one a little challenging because if it wasn't, then you're, you, I don't know, you're just a genius. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Please, if you haven't done so, subscribe to my YouTube channel and don't forget to follow me on Instagram and on TikTok where I'm posting math problems every single day. But that's gonna do it for now. I'll see you in the next one.